frankly, the biggest limitation is a lack of understanding. The engineers speak one language and the users speak a different language very often. I don't think the users necessarily have a good understanding of what the instruments they're working with are actually measuring. They're not blaming this on the users, but just that either from our side, from CalVal, don't necessarily communicate it well or in terms that the, a typical user can understand it. CalVal people tend to be engineers and users vary all over the place in terms of their understanding of the physics of what's actually being measured by the instruments. The way I explain calibration to students is I say it's the, what the engineers do to make the relationship between the digital numbers, which the sensor actually records, and radiance, which we then convert to reflectance. And so that's actually critical to have a, uh, a stable relationship between what we see on the ground and what the sensor sees, both in space and time. If we do a poor job on the calibration side, it's either less accurate data or more noisy data. And then the, the application side ends up either characterizing things that aren't there due to miscalibrations or not being able to characterize the things they're actually after. Um, especially as you look at like long-term trends, for example, is something that we're, we're very interested in. You know, how, how are ecosystems changing through time? You know, you're trying to put together observations from multiple sensors throughout the Landsat archive. If they're not all cross-calibrated and, and well-calibrated, then you really don't know if you're looking at, at real changes or just changes in the, in the instrumentation. We want to make sure that the products that the user gets are consistent. They don't have to, as a user, try to do figure out something to normalize it to the previous product or make it more consistent. We think about calibration as what the engineers do to get the digital numbers to radiance and reflectance correct. We think about validation in terms of what we do, which is to say how good um, a product that we're making, if we make a tree cover map or a map of cities or a map of vegetation change, we want to better independently say how good it is. As scientists, if we just make maps or data sets and then we can't say how accurate it is, how reliable it is, then we're going to have a problem. We're not really very plausible as scientists, but if some of our research becomes policy specific, then it's very important that we can say how good it is. You know, I think the big thing that application scientists are looking for is quantitative estimates of uncertainty about the observations. If you have a measurement error, then you can tell whether a trend or a pattern is, is statistically significant, statistically valid. Uh, if you don't have that, then uh, you're, sort of, um, you're sort of lost. There's some fundamental differences between the two instruments. I mean, they're not necessarily large. There are, we, we don't have exactly the same spectral bands on the two instruments. So you can't make them agree because they're not measuring exactly the same thing. And they're actually pretty close. They're within the two to 3% that, that we've, we believe each sensor is accurate to anyway. So I think it's more just the, the validation that we are producing products that are close together already. In some cases you can, can just take the raw data from Landsat and Sensor 2, put them on the same uh, time series and you hardly notice the difference between the, the two sensors. I think the big thing is going to continue what we've already started, working closer together with the Sentinel team so that we come to a, an agreement on how we should change one sensor or the other or both to be a more consistent product to improve the interoperability. The hope here is that this is going to be sort of a, a test case or a prototype of how to, how to do this, how to make two sensors that were developed separately. I mean, they, they were both developed to their own requirements, developed through separate processes. And we're going to see if we can bring them together in a way that makes them essentially interoperable. And if we can show that that can be done, then that paves a path for, to do that for other sensors. It's a fantastic time to be a user of satellite data. If you're in that kind of moderate resolution domain, this is amazing. The Sentinel and the Landsats together is going to be really, really a game changer. It truly is.